You were listening to the Battle Ready Podcast by McManus. I'm one half of this duo. My name is Aaron McManus, and I'm here with my dad, Erwin Raphael. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah? <laughs> Would <laughs> you tell good. me, if, was that an okay intro? Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I think we're um, we're having our transition because we we love what we built with Battle Ready. And we, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to rebrand it with McManus. and Yeah, we switched over the YouTube channel. Oh, wow. It's just your name. So I'm getting a lot of DMs from people saying, well, it's your name, too. But it's no, but it's it's your actual it's Erwin Erwin McManus, right? Right. So is it Erwin Raphael or Erwin McManus? Erwin Raphael. So it means that the first and middle name are mine and the last name is yours. <laughs> okay, I have something. Can, can we can we just jump into this? All right, let's jump go. into this. Okay. I have something very exciting. Oh. Huh? We have we have your we, we received your galleys of your new book. And if you don't know what a galley is, it's an unedited uh pre-printing that you usually send to key influencers or who will help promote your book or get the word out to the world. Should we give this one away? You cannot give away my You can't give it away? No. No? Well, maybe. No, no, no. If you can't, we can't. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it literally says advanced, advanced uncorrected proofs on sale 91923. That's not even right. There's already errors on the on the first. That's right. Yeah. There's all kinds of errors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the whole point, right? It's a yeah. it's a pre-release. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's it's Is, really just Should we show for, everyone? Yeah, come on, show them. Do the you want to show them, or you got it? Show. This them. is so exciting. We have to reverse this at some point, or flip it. What will it have to be flipped? No, it's not it weird. Might look for you. Oh, it does because I'm looking at the monitor. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mind shift. It doesn't take a genius to think like one. Mm -hmm. It's a small book mm -hmm. for men. All right. No. No, it's it. Well, I I was at a conference I, at an event last week, and I said. Uh, the book is really small because I wrote it for men because I know yeah. men don't read. <laughs> <laughs> it's what? 137 pages. Yeah. With the acknowledgments. But the, the book is really for men and women. It's just that I know that women will actually read bigger books without pictures. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, but um, It's very funny. Yeah. No, but it is definitely written more for the person who's the type A personality, who right. has an entrepreneurial spirit, who wants to create, who has a pioneering um, personality. And uh, it it really is, is written for people who are uh, ambitious and want to do something significant with their lives. Do you want to read the dedication? No. No? No. No? No. No? <laughs> and uh, it's my first, for, uh, is it Fourier? Is that the word? And... Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. We're um, I don't know. It's into French. the world of uh, social psychology and business, so it's not what people would call a faith book or a Christian book. It will not be in the Christianity well, books section. Can't except Jesus. No, I life. know. And uh, so there is no Christian book. <laughs> well, it, that is uh, true, and that's what's so right. ironic, and that's what I've been telling publishers for years. But if you go to Barnes and Nobles or to a bookstore, there are sections. Mm. And you'll have the Christian section, the religion section, the inspiration section, the social psychology section, the mm. business section. And you will not find this book in the Christian section. You'll find it in the business section or in the social psychology section. It's going to throw some people for a loop, and that's okay. Yeah. But I really think we should read the dedication. No? Because well, I want people to pre-order it. Which, right. If you're listening to us right now, if you're watching us right now, I want you to pre-order this book, Mind Shift, on Amazon, mm -hmm. on Barnes & Noble, wherever you can pre-order books, mm -hmm. you can go and pre-order Mind Shift. It comes out October 3rd, mm -hmm. 2023. We're what, five months away? We're flying through this year. Wow. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, but I am going to do something special for people who buy 50 copies and 100 copies and 500 copies and 1,000 copies and... And we're, we're pushing, we're building, we're going to build yeah. an incredible street team. And it starts yeah. with Battle Ready. It does. It starts with McManus podcast by Battle Ready. Well, that's because you guys are the most loyal uh, fans we have, most loyal followers, and you guys are our evangelists of everything that we do. So we're really grateful to yeah. all of you guys. Yeah, it's, it, the, yeah, this community is genuinely just my favorite. And they're, they're, yeah. you, you guys are phenomenal. Um, we obviously want to show you Which dedication did you want to read? The, the, the little one. Oh, you mean the the, uh, the little one that explains it all? All right, you can read that. All right, so no, no, you got to read it. It's your dedication. Okay. Well, this is not the dedication. Oh, this one. This, this one. is the dedication. It's the dedication. Yeah, it is dedication. The other one's like the homie shout out. Okay, so I think in the twelve books I've written, I've never dedicated a book like this. Okay, um, I've dedicated a book to your mom, to you, to Mariah, to her family, to different people, but this one says to Jesus, who created in me a mind shift that transformed my life from the inside out. He changed my heart, changed my mind, and changed my life. 
And the reason I dedicated the book to Jesus, even though at first I thought it's kind of odd to dedicate a book to Jesus, you dedicate your life to Jesus, but is that because the book isn't a book filled with um, faith references, hmm. you know, I'm not quoting the Bible, I'm not talking about faith or spirituality, I'm talking about life. Right. And I didn't want anyone to think that this book somehow is a, um, a divergence in terms of my own love and allegiance and uh, life in connection to Jesus. So I wanted to make sure that people knew, no, the book is ed dedicated to Jesus. So I'm just trying to help people who don't believe in him, and I'm trying to uh, impact um, a population of people that um, if you can bring them principles that will help their lives, it'll make them more open to bigger conversations about, about life, about faith, about God, about Jesus. Yeah, I'm very excited about this. I yeah. really love the dedication. When you called me and told me what you were doing in the dedication, it just made so much sense. It made so much sense, you know. And and I think, I think it does a few things, mm -hmm. but I think more than anything, it really just shows who you are and who you've always been, and 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 the relationship you've always had with your faith, with Jesus, with God, and and the understanding and your life mission has always been to help people have go on this spiritual journey and mm -hmm. find a life of meaning and purpose, and of faith. Yeah. Um, and there are nuances for me, too, because most of the time when people talk about their relationship to God or the relationship to Jesus, uh, the changes that people usually talk about are like moral changes. Mm -hmm. And um, and obviously moral changes are important and they have huge impact on the well-being of your life and everything. Uh, but, I, but I found that the biggest changes in my life were not the moral changes, because strangely enough, um, I was a really moral person before I met Jesus. Right. And in fact, I would say that I was foundationally more moral than 99% of all the Christians I've ever met in my life way before I believed in, in God and believed in Jesus. Yeah. And so that's kind of like one of the interesting, you know, I, I, like sub-narratives sub for me. Where I really changed was in my thinking and how... Um, and it wasn't just that, you know, I was thinking like negative thoughts. It was, I feel like God has expanded my imagination, has somehow expanded my intelligence. If it's, mm. if it's humanly or divinely possible to make a person smarter or increase their IQ, um, I believe that's actually happened in my life because of Jesus. And when I'm in rooms now and people talk about me in, in the most um, unexpected of ways, and, you know, when I'm in a room of savants or geniuses or polymaths and 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 they think or perceive that I'm like their equal or their peer. I attribute anything that's happened in my life in that direction because of my journey with Jesus. I actually think Jesus made me smarter, mm. made me wiser for certain, mm. maybe more intuitive and more uh, insightful and more inventive. And um, and so I, I, I feel like uh, we've underestimated how spirituality can actually be expressed in an intelligence, not just in an emotion and not just in morality. Do you, you really believe that your faith and your spirituality has unlocked different levels inside of your mind? Absolutely, without question. Can you kind of go into that a little bit? I mean, you just did, but, but yeah. maybe, I don't know, if there's a way to ground it in some sort of reality. Well, I mean, I think of even just the biblical um, nuances where God says, you know, that my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, and that he's on an entirely different frequency than us, that God thinks up here, we think down here. Mm. And God's like, you think you're having a high-level conversation, mm. but you're, you're not even at my basement. Mm. And, and then um, in the New Testament, when Paul says that um, who can possibly understand the mind of God except the Spirit of God, but we have the mind of Christ. Mm. And... And so I, I look at the scripture and I go, wait a minute, God is literally saying to us that his ways, his thoughts are way above our thoughts, but now we have the mind of Christ. So we, you know, if you had the superpower, you put this helmet on, and now this helmet suddenly elevates your level of thinking, like I guess Xavier, Dr. X and X-Men, you know, he had this kinetic uh, power, mental power, but the, but the helmet he wore actually uh, multiplied that power. And, uh, you know, whatever, you know, a thousand times over again. And the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And I actually think that, that we've underestimated the full measure of having the mind of Christ. That, um, 
you know, and so even when the scriptures then tell us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, um, I don't need to really think at a super high level not to rob a grocery store. I don't need to think at a super high level not to be unfaithful to my wife. I don't need to think at a super high level to be able to see through the stupidity of a lot of really life destructive choices. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of people do, you know, need at least a little more intelligence to go, hey, uh, Ja, don't don't show that gun on Instagram. Like, you, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're going, there are some basic things we're going, wow, if he just had a little bit more uh, of intelligence, the, uh, intelligence, right. yeah, you and know, he, and he seems like a bright young man, but, but really, you know, you just made making stupid choices, right? You made a reference to John Morant and no, he's on the Memphis Grizzlies. But I think it's important. A, a pro player. You're right. Yeah. right. He pro brandish, basketball player yeah. now is showing a gun on Instagram for the, second, the first, yeah, third, time. second or third time. He may yeah. lose his entire career, may lose hundreds of millions of dollars of, of uh, potential um, wealth for him because he, he doesn't seem to understand the weight of his choices. And so I do think that there are entry level shifts in our de decision making that have to happen and happen when you come into a relationship with Jesus. But I don't think that ends simply at the entry level of moral choices. Hmm. I think that God can keep increasing your capacity to think, to have insight, to have intuition, to perceive, to have uh, vision. And, and I think that having the mind of Christ is limitless. And that's where we develop our limitless capacity. And I think it's very exciting. I think we're just tapping into that. All right, so let's take a let's take a second and shift into a new topic from mind shift to maybe gratitude. And one thing that I've noticed from spending time with you and a lot of your friends, that when you get to a certain level, it feels like a few things stand out characteristics, attributes of uh, people's mm -hmm. personalities and character, the way they see the world. One, that they're incredibly grateful people, mm -hmm. incredibly selfless, um, and incredibly driven. Uh, that it's not just about you know, making money at any given point, it's also about having purpose and finding a purpose and sticking with that purpose. Um, but could you walk, us, walk me through how important gratitude is in your life? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can come at gratitude. Um, But I, I really, I think it was uh, Michael J. Fox I was listening to the other day, and he was talking about how that the only way that you can always be optimistic is by having gratitude. Hmm. And I thought, wow, I mean, here's a guy who um, he struggled with Parkinson's and, you know, just been battling that for as long as I can remember, maybe decades. Yeah. And yet has produce some of the greatest uh, TV work and that I've seen in um, and just really appreciate him and enjoy him and and when he talks about being a grateful person and how that gratitude is what gives him the strength to be optimistic I not only do I agree 100 percent not only is that really my life experience but that is really what the scriptures teach us is that um, I mean gratitude is just foundational to your perspective you know, people talk about having um, a good attitude or having a healthy perspective. Attitude and perspective never happen in a vacuum. Your attitude is completely connected to the um, degree to which you express humility. Arrogant people have bad attitudes. Humble people have good attitudes. Mm -hmm. And perspective is completely shaped by the degree which you experience gratitude. Ungrateful people have negative perspectives and grateful people have positive, optimistic perspectives. And so those two things, attitude and perspective, that are so essential to living everyday life are rooted in character traits of humility and gratitude. I remember years ago when I was in Dallas, I was um, there for an event um, with this neuro clinic and they do a lot of research on um, mental performance. And the scientists got up there and said, hey, uh, we've discovered the lubricant of the brain, and we're all trying to figure out, you know, is this a new kind of chemical or is this a drug they're going to introduce to us? And they uh, they said gratitude is the lubricant of the brain. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, they said grateful people have more agile minds, wow. um, more flexible minds, right and ungrateful down. people actually end up having mental rigidity. And I can tell you that it's so true because I meet a lot of 20-year-olds and I thought to myself, why is this person so mentally rigid? And how is it possible that you could be 24 years old and so um, and 
so uninclined to change or un unable to see a new perspective or to see things from a new way. Mm. And you realize there's a direct relationship with the person who's incredibly entitled. Mm. When, when you grow up entitled and you grow up expecting whatever you have and, and you grow up ungrateful, you actually become mentally rigid. Mm. And if you begin to take on the posture of gratitude, being thankful for everything in life, uh, looking around and seeing um, all the beauty and wonder that is a gift, and you see life as a gift, you just become more imaginative. You become more inventive, more creative, more innovative. Mm. You become more mentally agile. And so, you know, especially when I think about like my stage in life, I mean, I'm gonna turn 65 this year. Um, I mean, honestly, being inside my head, I feel like my mind is as, as flexible and agile. I mean, uh, my brain is capable of mental yoga, even though my body is not. <laughs> um, and I think a huge part of my mental agility is because of having the posture of gratitude in my life. Hmm. And, and then I know a lot of people who are half my age, but because of ungratefulness are not able to make rapid changes in their perception and their perspectives and their, um, in their uh, um, beliefs, and they just become dogmatic. Interesting. Think about it in dating. Right. When you're when you're ungrateful, you are resistant to change, hmm. and that other person just irritates you and agitates you whenever you have to make any kind of adjustment. Hmm. And when you're grateful for that person, you become incredibly flexible and adaptive, and yeah. and you're able to adjust. And yeah. you know, so much of dating and and marriage and any level of relationships is about your posture of gratitude for the other person. Yeah, so how do you do that, right? Because you've been married for a very long time. Almost, yeah, almost 40, 40 years. years. Next yeah. year's 40, right? Yep. Wow. Yeah. You've been married longer than I've been alive, which is... No, that's a good thing. Probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. It's yeah, a good we'll thing. have to talk but later. It's, but it's a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but it's it really is a remarkable thing, right? To, yeah. to be married for, the, for that long. There's obviously... Mm -hmm. There has to have been... You know, I know because I saw it from the inside out, right? I was, I was, I was a, a front row, front and center <laughs> for most of your marriage, and to be a part of it has been a gift. But there obviously were moments in your life and moments in your marriage where gratitude was probably lacking in the marriage, right? Whether yeah. it's with each other or what life mm -hmm. has given you or the situations that you were in. How do you, I guess, see through to the other side? Because we were talking about this, right? Like, how do you how do you make things last? How do you bring longevity to situations, even in the hard moments? And how do you know when to give up, right? Because you obviously made a choice and you never gave up. Yeah. But there had to be moments where you're like, I give up. There were lots of little <laughs> give ups. Yeah. You just, it's never the big one, yeah. right? And so how did you, how did you manage that? Yeah, I think one of the main things is that you cannot give yourself permission to hold on to resentment. And there is no married couple that hasn't had some kind of level of conflict. I do know people who have said to me, we've never had a single fight in all of our marriage. Wow. And sounds so boring. I always think to myself, one of the two people is lying. They're, they're not being honest about how they feel. They're not being honest about what's going on inside of them. If you've never had a conflict in your entire marriage, Mm. someone is completely subservient or submissive to the other person's opinion. Someone is lowering the volume as we speak in the car with this podcast playing <laughs> with their partner. <laughs> like this. And because um, um, if you have two human beings, you're not going to always have one opinion. Hmm. You're going to have two opinions, and you have to figure out how to resolve that and reconcile that. And But I look back and I think, the difference with so many people is that when they get when they get offended or they get upset or something doesn't go their way, they hold on to that resentment. Hmm. And one of the disciplines I've had to take on in my own life is when I feel angry or feel frustrated or I feel offended that I have to tell myself, you got to let this go. You cannot give yourself permission uh, to hold on to offense. Hmm. And, you know, talk it out, work it out, find a way but don't uh, let offense become your normal uh, posture. Hmm. I think that's one of the biggest ones. It's about forgiveness. You forgiveness. just have to forgive all the time. Yeah. 
and be forgiven and ask for forgiveness and yeah and make things right as much as possible yeah that it just seems so complicated it really does it really does seem so complicated <laughs> it really isn't complicated it's just hard yeah uh, maybe that's what it is <laughs> right yeah. it's not hard uh ask for forgiveness <laughs> right right and right. forgive right and uh right. and, and so then the hard to, part so is what do you do that. what do you do when a person says i'm sick of you saying i'm sorry yeah that's why it's better to change what you do but then uh to um focus on what you say but mistakes are going to always happen yeah right you're going to make each other mad so how do you get to a point where it's it's less about ap apologizing than it is about changing yeah well i think that's the best apology is to change okay and you know and um and for but for relationships to last for a long time you also have to realize there's some things that that other person may not change that you really wish to would change hmm. and you just have to accept that you're going to love that person regardless of the change or not hmm. it, you right. know yeah and um and then you have to focus on the positive good that that person brings into your life hmm. you know because it and because even in the most irritating situations there's so many other things that are involved in that relationship they're actually probably really good mm -hmm. it's just what you focus on mm -hmm. if you focus on the positive contributions or you focus on negative ones mm -hmm. you know yeah okay that's interesting i remember it was you know maybe 15 years ago uh kim you know came to me and said hey you're traveling way too much and um and i remember saying hey i'm totally willing to travel less we just have to make these adjustments in our lifestyle yeah and you know if we can make these adjustments in our lifestyle then i can travel less and work less and i think sometimes it's having that conversation because there was almost like a break point where it was like all right maybe you should travel a little more <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, maybe, and you know and i think you have to be honest in those conversations going uh, you can't ask for one thing and not realize it affects the other thing hmm. and you have to be able to in a sense, talk about those things and go, um, I am so willing to change this as long as we're able to change this because those things are connected. Mm. And, you know, even with like with you and Mariah, one of the ways I made the adjustment is I just took you guys with me. Mm. You, know, you guys just traveled the world with me a lot. Right. Yeah. And and took you out of school a ton. And I just made the choice that I'd rather have you miss school than yeah, I mean, miss I think being with me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I yeah. think I had traveled to over 30 countries before the age of 18. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I mean, yeah. Mariah even more because she ended up getting, when I went to college, you did a couple of Europe trips for work. Yeah. And now she, that's unfair because there's like a country every 30 minutes, you know, <laughs> and she, and she racked them up and she got closer to 40. But I, I think, you know, I think I've been to over 50 countries. She's also lifetime. very competitive. She wanted to make sure she very went to more than you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And every once in a while you'll bring up and be like, oh, you've been to Berlin, right? And I'm like, no. I haven't actually <laughs> I haven't been to Berlin but um no I mean even growing up it was such a great honor and such a great experience mm -hmm. to have seen the world and to also to feel like I was a part of the thing you were building mm -hmm. right a part of your speaking career part of your book career part of your I sat in so many boardrooms yeah you were publishing companies and I remember sitting with 20 30 people meetings and you going okay just sit in the corner you know eat a little bit hang out you know try not to make too much noise and write down all of your thoughts of every person in the room who speaks. Mm -hmm. And I would write these kind of roadmaps. And mm -hmm. I look at it, I was conditioned to do the things <laughs> that we do now. <laughs> like walking into a room and like reading people and understanding yeah. people and, 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 and you know, observing emotional energy and physical mm -hmm. energy. Uh, but I was doing that at a young age. I mean, like mm -hmm. seven, five, yeah. five years. I remember you pulled me out of the LA Zoo field trip in school. <laughs> to you left my buddy there <laughs> with, the, with another parent and and student and you're like we're going to the with the disney board room meeting and i was like what is this and you're like you're gonna hang out with some interns <laughs> you'll get ice cream later or something and i sat in that boardroom and and to, and, and just listened for hours mm -hmm. four or five six hours i remember just you so much of my very very long meetings very long meetings yeah yeah all over the world it was yeah. great loved it yeah and even there it's like you know it, it was a different you experienced a different life and so you lost Absolutely. some things and you gained some things you know oh i remember do you remember the time that i i wanted to i wanted to uh, have a perfect record yeah i wanted a perfect record in school <laughs> i remember you're in first grade and uh i said aaron um 
I'm going to go to Japan and I want you to go with me. And you're like, oh, great. When? I said, next week. You're like, dad, I, I can't miss school next week. And you were in first grade. Yeah. <laughs> I said, why can't you miss school next week? He said, because when you graduate here in 12th grade, you get an award if you have a perfect record, <laughs> attendance record. Which just shows you how, <laughs> how clinically OCD I was <laughs> as a child, and as said, a six-year-old. <laughs> and I thought, what is, what is a first grader doing thinking about getting a perfect attendance record in 12th grade when they graduate from high school? Oh, man. And I remember saying to you, hey, buddy, I have bad news for you. <laughs> So you are never going to win the perfect attendance oh, award. Man. And you cried. I cried. I remember so crying. I remember with being me. really upset. I stole from you your perfect <laughs> attendance record as you traveled to 35 countries and around then, the world. And then you lost me in Japan. You lost me in Japan. No better place On to the lose subway. You. On the subway. No better place to lose a child than Japan. No. <laughs> it's better places. There are better places. What have been more difficult places? <laughs> <laughs> I remember being on the subway and I don't know how it happened, but I think you got off the subway and this, you this did not get off. The trains are very, very busy and very <laughs> full. And I'm about the size of the table. I'm five years old and I'm a little five. I'm not a big five. Austin, I imagine you were a big five. You're tall. You're like six one or, you know, you're a big guy. I was a little five. You, you did not get off at the time to execute no. <laughs> the exit. No. And you did not do what I told you to do. No. I got off the train. It's it, Maybe it's why I have abandonment issues. And then you stayed on the train. And we were um, in the Shibuya area. The Shibuya station. Like where I think we were like three stations past it. And did I did I not teach you ahead of time what to do if we were separated you in always, the subway? You always taught me. stay. The, you always go to the last place you saw me. Yep. And so the last place I saw you. And you had also told me if you ever get lost on the train, you get off the next stop and you stay right there. That's right. And so I lost you and I was at the door seeing you. And I remember just going, <laughs> I'm gonna have to learn Japanese. <laughs> I, I, I life of sushi. I'm gonna have to learn, ja I'm, I'm have to learn Japanese. I'm definitely never gonna get the perfect attendance reward now. <laughs> and, and, and did I not find you right away? You found me right away. Yeah, I think the first thing you said was, let's not tell your mother this story. <laughs> And so, honey, if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> I found your son. But I really did, you know, and I think you didn't, you changed your lifestyle. You really mm -hmm. did. You guys changed your lifestyle, and I think in a different way, right? You guys didn't cut your lifestyle down. What you did is you increased the capacity of your lifestyle. You mm -hmm. just brought me with you. Mm -hmm. You didn't just bring me with you. I remember we go on trips, so you would bring five, ten people. You would yeah. you would trade your entire speaking fee to bring your staff along. Yeah. Something that no one does. No one does. These bougie speakers in our world are like, you know, <laughs> I remember us, this is not even long ago. I remember being in like a, in Sydney or not Sydney, where were we? Maybe it was Atlanta. I don't know where we were, mm -hmm. but we were somewhere. And we, I found out what the other guy got, that he gets to bring two friends in first class. And I was like, sir, we got to talk about our arrangements here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in the back in the middle of the, I remember there was a trip to Brazil and I got put dead middle of a five seater in economy. Given, I was not used to sitting in the front, but you did ask me to go on this trip. And I was like, don't do me dirty like this, like this. You, do you remember that? And I remember texting you and then the Wi-Fi cut off because we were taking off and I was like, I'm going to have a panic attack. I can't even get to the bathroom. I can't even stretch my legs. I have two people who speak Portuguese on both sides of me. And this is a 14 hour flight. Yeah. Yeah, we we reconstructed some, we re we structured some. It's so some, interesting some that this operations. this conversation began about gratitude, Austin. <laughs> it really did, and I'm ungrateful. <laughs> oh. So so you're sitting here whining I, about sitting getting, in the middle getting seat. to go to Brazil as a as a kid. Uh, that was I was a man. You were a man. I was a man. That well, I was a boy man. Yeah, like if you're writing about man boy about flying to Brazil, you're not quite a man yet. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm saying some of our lifestyle differences, and yeah. no, I, I I think gratitude for me. I think the last few mm -hmm. months has been really key. Like realizing, mm -hmm. I listened to a Jay Shetty clip or talk, mm -hmm. a podcast, talking about one of the things that he really believes that needs to be involved and engaged in a relationship. And this is something growing up in the church is so key to growing up in the church, but you don't really hear this outside the church too often. Mm -hmm. We talked about, you need to go and serve together. You need to go and like 
serve other people. He's like, mm -hmm. whether it's a homeless shelter, whether it's, you know, a food, a, a food kitchen, you know, feeding the homeless, go and help people who could use your help and do that together and see how you both serve. And when you look at relationships, even mine in the past, that's been a key element that's been missing. It's like, how are we going to actually help and approach changing the world together? Even mm -hmm. if it's on a micro level, even if it's just bringing some good to the world mm -hmm. and how do we become more grateful and so grateful where we need, we know we need to give back. Mm -hmm. And so gratitude has really been on my heart, really been on my mind. And I think it's a key element and something that's oftentimes forgotten in young people. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself still young, even though I'm going to turn 35 this year, which is great. How mm -hmm. old are you? 30. Austin's 30. I've known him since he was a baby. <laughs> now I'm 35. Getting old, getting up there. Anyways, gratitude still is young key. Man. You're still a young man. Yeah, but tying um, a tying ribbon around this package. Yeah, <laughs> let's, 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 let's ship <laughs> this. Let's set this ship to sail. Yeah, I, I think that, um, that one of the things that helps a person keep perspective and keep gratitude at the core of their life is to realize that um, life really is like a series of give and takes. And um, everything in life doesn't go your way. Yeah. But how you engage the things that do not go your way actually are the best measure of your character. Mm. It's not the things that go your way. When things are going your way, of course, you're going to be grateful. But you may not actually be grateful. You may be entitled. I'm, I've, definitely, I've definitely lived with a lot of entitlement. And, and so what you have to be careful of is that you think you're grateful, but it's really you're entitled. Hmm. And it's, it's how you respond when things do not go your way, when th you do not get what you want, when mm -hmm. you are inconvenienced, that becomes the best measure of how much gratitude actually um, is carried within um, your soul. Mm. And, then, and then to realize that an ungrateful spirit actually blinds you to opportunities and possibilities. That it, a gratefulness isn't just a nice attitude to have. Gratefulness is essential for you to live at an optimal level of performance. Mm. If you're not grateful, you're not achieving your highest capacity. So how do you practice gratitude? Oh, uh, simple things like, um, you know, I mean, there are people who say things like get up and take a, a gratitude walk. I think my friend John Gordon does that every day. He does like a 10, 15 minute walk okay. where he just expresses gratitude every day. Okay. And it's really uh, an internal posture. It is mindset. internal. I just, it's just thanking, you know, God. I mean, taking time to pray. Just thanking God for the day. Thanking God for life. It's actually why you're supposed to pray before meals so that you posture your heart with gratitude. It's not supposed to be a ritual or some kind of symbol. It's really supposed to be a real landing of your heart saying, thank you so much, God. You know, I just want to acknowledge that everything I have is a gift. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I, I, I mean, worship is an act of gratitude. Prayer is an act of gratitude. And, but I actually think that giving... Uh, thanks to people, thanking people for what they do is an act of gratitude. And mm. um, for me, one of my biggest expressions of gratitude is um, is tipping. Mm. And in my bag, I have I have a hundred dollars worth of one dollar bills, and I have uh, usually a stack of five dollar bills, and a stack of ten dollar bills, and a stack of twenty dollar bills. And because I I just always want to have cash uh, to tip people to say thank you to say thank you because I feel like it's an expression of gratitude. Yeah. I don't expect that that person should have to serve me. I don't want to act like I'm entitled so that person should be the one doing that for me. It's, yeah. quote, not just their job. Right. It's their life. Hmm. And um, and I know you do this a lot, but, you know, there's just something wonderful about, like, tipping someone the, the price of the bill. And right. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, uh, your mom and I were at uh, Dim Tai Fung and we went and got some food and um, and the young girl who was working there, I think it was her first day and, you know, um, tipped her a hundred dollars yeah. and um, then they had to come bring us our, our leftovers and she came back. She was, I think you made a mistake yeah. on the bill. I yeah. said, no, no, we didn't make a mistake. She, she was, are you sure? I think you made a mistake. I said, no, no, that we, we, we tipped you on purpose. Right. And she started crying. Oh, and that's so beautiful. She was just so overwhelmed. And I left and I told Kim, I said, I don't know if I experience any bigger joy than to watch someone like be overwhelmed with gratitude. Yeah. It's because really you've done a small thing. act of kindness and, and, uh, yeah. And so I think there, are, those are the ways to me, you express gratitude. You, you, 
just refuse to be an entitled human being mm -hmm. and to realize there are people serving you all around you and expressing thanks or, fun, or finding a way, um, you know, to bless them. To me, that's gratitude at a very practical level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay, we're going to wrap this thing up. Okay. okay, I'm grateful for every single person who listens to this podcast. <laughs> and watches these videos and joins us and is a part of our community with Battle Ready, with McManus, with just really our, our family across the world. I want you guys to go and pre-order this book, Mind Shift, right now. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, you can go to erwinmcmanus.com and you can hit the link and it'll send you to wherever you'd like to buy books. Um, it's a great place. It's a great book. Uh, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a book that really does impact the culture in a massive way. And I'm, I'm ready for millions of people to have a mind shift. And so I'm really grateful for this. I'm really ready for it. I've read the book multiple times. So I'm excited to read it in this version where I can highlight things <laughs> and underline. And we always argue because I love paperback, but it's actually yeah. coming in hardback. Yes. And then a paperback. Yes. But I, I love I love all of it. So if you're if you if you do audiobook, paperback, hardback, whatever it is, go and pre order this right now and read this book and make sure this is the book you start uh October with coming up this fall. We will see you guys very soon on this podcast. All right. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye.